Good Tuesday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's weather forecast, we'll be looking at a brief warming trend with spring-like temperatures returning this week. That will also fuel frequent severe weather with very large hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes. We'll detail who could see those threats throughout the week. And then another cold blast is expected late April into early May. We'll get into those details later on in today's video. But if you guys are not yet subscribe to the YouTube channel. Now is the time to subscribe if you want detailed weather breakdowns on North America, including Southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics. Definitely hit the subscribe button down below. And also, it's very important to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below the video. It helps to get all of this valuable weather information out to as many people as possible. So I definitely appreciate it. But going through today, we have a couple of troughs we're keeping an eye on. A stronger trough up here across the Pacific Northwest. This is our big storm moving cross country here this week. And then we got another trough exiting the northeastern United States into southeastern Canada. But right in between today, into our Wednesday, that's where we have that ridge of high pressure and that's going to continue to float its way eastward as we get toward the middle and end of this week. So with that said, we are going to see some warming trends here with our temperatures. We got the cooler air up here across the Great Lakes and the Northeast here this morning and we're only going to top out into the 40s and 50s across these areas into portions of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, getting down into Northern Ohio and much of the Northeast today. Meanwhile, South South of these areas, we're going to be seeing the 70s and 80s returning across much of the southern, southeastern United States in those drought areas here into portions of Kansas, Oklahoma, and the Texas Panhandle. We'll probably be back into the upper 80s to near 90 degrees today, and that will continue to move farther to the east and northeast as we go through the day on Wednesday as a warm front starts to slowly lift up into the lower Midwest and the southern Great Lakes region by the middle of the week. But looking here at the drought monitor, we definitely are seeing some dry conditions here across the Great Plains, especially to Nebraska, western Kansas, western parts of Oklahoma, especially the Oklahoma Panhandle, getting down into West Texas here. And why this is important is because we're going to have some strong winds within the next 24 hours here, going all the way from now through Wednesday morning across these very same areas right over the dry ground. And that's why we have the red flag warnings out here going through through today across portions of western Nebraska, western Kansas, the Oklahoma and Texas Panhandle, getting into much of eastern Colorado and the entire state of New Mexico as well. Even some more red flag warnings over here into West Virginia, Virginia, and parts of Maryland going through the day today. And the reason for that is we have a fire weather risk. With the dry ground, the warmer temperatures, and the strong winds, it does elevate that fire weather risk, if not make it more critical through portions of Colorado. Colorado, Western Kansas, the Oklahoma, Texas Panhandle, and getting into much of New Mexico today. We even have some elevated fire weather concerns across the Mid-Atlantic we'll have to watch. And then as we go into our Wednesday, much of the same areas will be experiencing those elevated to critical fire weather conditions as we get into Wednesday afternoon and evening. But looking here on the other side of the ledger, we're watching for more storms to develop. This is as we get into this afternoon. East of that dry line here, we're going to see some warmer dew points lifting farther north. Dew points will be into the 50s and 60s out here as far north as southeastern Nebraska and up near the Kansas City region. And that is going to contribute to some moderate values of instability. We have instability values values up to around 1500 or 2000 joules per kilogram as we get into peak daytime heating this afternoon and that could spark a conditional risk for strong to severe storms so up here near the warm front up into portions of Wyoming southern South Dakota getting into southwestern Minnesota western Iowa and parts of Nebraska there we definitely have to watch out for some stronger storms, but also that lifting mechanism along the dry line across western and central Kansas, western Oklahoma, and to northwest Texas, we're definitely going to have to watch out for some damaging winds and some large hail with possibly a brief tornado here if this does start to spark up later on today. But there is a caveat to this. So there is a capping inversion, which is a shallow warm layer aloft here that prevents any big thunderstorm development. That will be on the 
atmosphere through the afternoon today and actually strengthen considerably as we go into tonight across the much of the Great Plains here, including the Southern Plains in that marginal risk area. And we see the simulated radar. So early on this afternoon, we have that capping inversion in place. So there's not going to be any surface based and probably not even any elevated type of thunderstorms through early on this afternoon, getting into about mid to late afternoon, three, four, five o'clock. We might start to see some storms firing up here into the Missouri Valley from Kansas City and just west of St. Louis there. We might have to watch these for some elevated hail concerns, um, possibly a strong storm or two. That's as that warm front lifts farther north, that's where those storms will be developing is right over a warm front. And then as we go into later on this evening, the storms really struggle to develop as that cap remains strong and actually strengthens through the evening hours. If we see any storms develop, I'm more confident of that on the northern edge of the marginal risk area up here in the Nebraska, getting into western Iowa and we'll see a clustering of storms overnight after midnight even into your Wednesday morning that will be right along that warm front as it lifts to the north and east. So we're going to be watching you guys up here in Nebraska Iowa getting into the upper Midwest for possibly some elevated hail type of thunderstorms as we get in toward that after midnight time frame. Then as we go into Wednesday that warm front continues to surge farther to the north. We have the warmer air again that warm sector will be quite deep with this system on Wednesday Wednesday, and that means the dew points will be rising even farther towards the north. So southern portions of Minnesota getting in through Iowa, northern Illinois, southwest Wisconsin, dew points will be rising into the 50s and 60s with the higher dew points into the low to mid 60s farther south into the southern plains. And we have a decent signal for at least a moderate to strong instability here on Wednesday, even some decent values as far north as Iowa and western Illinois Wednesday afternoon. And the Storm Prediction Center goes as follows here. A level 2 of 5, a slight risk for severe storms across central Iowa, including the Des Moines area, getting back into portions of southeastern Nebraska, including the Omaha area, getting down to near Kansas City there into northwestern portions of Missouri, much of central and eastern Kansas, including Topeka, Wichita, and then getting down into western Oklahoma with a marginal risk that extends down toward the Rio Grande Valley there into south central Texas. And looking at the individual hazards, what these storms could bring to the table possibly some 60 70 mile per hour damaging winds through the evening hours here on Wednesday but by far we're looking at a tornado threat right now it looks like a 2% shading for tornadoes across the Des Moines area Kansas City possibly getting into the Omaha region through Wichita down through the Oklahoma City metro area and then just west of the Dallas Fort Worth metroplex but by far the biggest risk will be the very large hail you see the greens here that's a 5% shading for hail the yellow that is a 15% shading and then you see the hatch to risk here in western Iowa southeastern Nebraska through central Kansas and down into west central Oklahoma those areas could be talking about some golf ball size hailstones or greater so those two inch or larger hailstones in diameter as we go into this evening so looking at early on on Wednesday afternoon we are seeing that warm front surging farther off to the north and east so again the atmosphere is capped off through the early afternoon hours but by the time we get in toward the late afternoon early evening toward the dinner time frame we're gonna start to see storms firing up right along that cold front as it progresses slowly to the east especially up here into central Iowa and those storms are really blow up in intensity by mid to late afternoon toward the 10 o'clock time frame. And these could be the storms that could be producing some damaging winds and also some very large hailstones over two inches in diameter. So definitely watching out for that. And looking here at the lapse rate, and that's the reason why we're seeing such large hail potential with this system on Wednesday night is the lapse rates are almost off the charts here, guys. Um, it's the rate of which the temperature, uh, ex you know, cools aloft and that's going to be rapid going through Wednesday night so definitely concerning with that and then it'll turn more into a damaging wind and heavy rain threat as we go through the night with a more of an MCS cluster here across western portions of Wisconsin through eastern Iowa and getting down into northern parts of Missouri will struggle to make southward progress as there is a cap again on the atmosphere overnight across the Missouri Valley and the southern plains but then as we go into Thursday 
This system is still hanging around parts of the eastern two-thirds of the country with severe weather and open warm sector again. Dew points will be back into the 50s and 60s, 60 degree dew points, possibly up into Milwaukee, Chicago, down into Peoria, Illinois as well. And those, uh, you know, instability values will be weak to moderate with the higher values down here by far into Texas, southeastern Oklahoma, into the Arklatex regions on Thursday. So there is, again, no surprise. There's a day three slight risk for severe storms across southeastern Missouri, getting through central Arkansas, including Jonesboro, Little Rock, and then getting down toward the Texarkana region, Shreveport, Louisiana, and then getting into East Texas, including the College Station and the Tyler, Texas region, just east of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex on Thursday. So Thursday early afternoon, we do it all over again. We got more strong storms possibly ongoing Thursday early afternoon, but it's as we get toward late afternoon, early evening again, remember peak daytime heating, we're going to see the the storms re-intensify with a broken line of storms from Milwaukee down through Chicago here, Peoria, Illinois, through St. Louis, and then getting all the way south and westward toward the Dallas-Fort Worth area with some storms. And then this will really blow up into a solid squall line after midnight into Friday morning, posing the risk for damaging winds, large hail, and possibly a few embedded tornadoes. And then going into Friday, again, another severe weather risk. This is day four now. With that slight risk down into southeast Texas, closer to the Houston area, Beaumont, and then getting up into central Louisiana and far western portions of Mississippi near the Natchez region as we get toward that Friday afternoon time frame. And again, the the ingredients remain the same. Dew points will be high into the 60s, 70s on Friday here, and the instability is going to be pretty strong. So I'm a little bit more concerned about Friday here with the instability up around 3,000, perhaps pushing 4,000 joules per kilogram here in especially East Texas and then lessening amounts of instability the farther east that you go toward Mississippi. But we're going to be watching that solid squall line ongoing here toward the Friday morning commute. This is 7 a.m. from the Ohio Valley down through the western Tennessee Valley and the deep south here. That will weaken through midday so we'll have a break that will allow the instability to build, the moisture to build and then by the time we get toward the evening hours again, peak daytime heating toward the dinner time frame, 6, 7, 8 o'clock clock on Friday, more scattered showers and storms, and these could be feisty again with some damaging winds, large hail, and a couple of tornadoes. That will uh, push its way farther east across the deep south and the Tennessee Valley uh, as we get into early Saturday morning, and likely falling apart with the severe weather risk and turning more into a heavy rain threat as we get towards Saturday morning. And speaking of the heavy rain, the total rainfall accumulation from now through Sunday on the 23rd of April, we're definitely going to be piling up the rainfall here, not only across the deep south here, but even the Ohio Valley, the Midwest, the Great Lakes, even up here into portions of southeastern Canada will be getting their fair share of heavy rain with by far the heaviest amounts in these purple and red shaded colors from portions of western Ohio, southern Indiana getting through Kentucky here, southern Illinois, all the way south into the middle and lower Mississippi Valley regions. We are going to be talking about two to as much as four inches worth of rain from now through the end of this upcoming weekend. And looking at the days where we could have flash flooding potential, it looks highest up here near the warm front Wednesday into Thursday with a clustering of storms here. These will also be those hail type of thunderstorms uh, as we go into that Wednesday night time frame. And then it expands with the coverage of the flash flooding threat through the uh, upper Mississippi Valley, mid Mississippi Valley, and uh, by far the southern plains to the Arklatex will be that slight risk for flash flooding Thursday into Friday. We got to watch those areas around the Little Rock area, Memphis getting back down here toward the Dallas Fort Worth area. And then that pushes farther east across the lower Mississippi Valley with that slight risk for flash flooding on Friday night and into Saturday morning. Looking at the snowfall totals here, going from now th again through Sunday, April 23rd, the highest amounts will be up here by far into Ontario, Canada, northern Quebec, and then back across northern Minnesota, northern por uh, portions of North Dakota here, and then back across the Pacific Northwest. That's where we're going to be piling up six, seven, eight inches, maybe a few areas over a foot of snow getting through this upcoming weekend. So definitely seeing that. So if you have any travel plans up across the Pacific Northwest, the Northern Plains, the upper Midwest or Southeastern Canada, definitely want to be glued to the forecast as there is some travel concerns with the heavier snowfall up there. But no matter what happens beyond this system, temperatures again will take another tumble. 
bubble. So we're going to be cooling off again through the end of this month. This goes from uh, the to Sunday time frame on the 23rd all the way through Thursday, April 27th. The eastern two-thirds of the country will be well below normal. And we have a little bit of a ridge trying to develop here across the Four Corners region and the desert southwest with some warmer than normal temperatures during this time frame. And that also has, again, some staying power. So this cold air will be sticking around through at least the opening day or so of May going through Monday, May 1st at least across the eastern two-thirds of the country. And we'll try to see what happens with this ridge across the west, see if it uh, starts to slide farther east and toward the Great Plains, which it does appear to be the case as we get beyond that May 1st time frame. And you can see with those temperatures on Friday, this upcoming Friday on April 21st, that cold front will be sagging its way farther south. Colder temperatures will be back. These are your high temperatures back into the 40s and 50s we go across portions of the upper Midwest and the Missouri Valley. Friday night, there is a big concern for more widespread frost and even freeze conditions across much of the upper Midwest here, even as far south as Oklahoma and the Texas Panhandle, we could be into the freezing mark getting into this upcoming Friday night. So if you have any plants outside, definitely be sure to cover these up as we go toward that Friday night time frame and be only going to be able to recover into the 40s on Saturday across those areas that are cold into the 20s on Saturday morning. And then again, Saturday night, more frosty and freezing conditions will be up here across portions of the upper Midwest. West, the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley. Again, another night to cover up the plants and vegetation. And then we're only going to recover back again into the 40s and 50s on Sunday. And again, this cycle will repeat itself all the way through the beginning stages of May. Well, if you want to follow me more on Twitter for more additional weather forecast updates, be sure to follow me down below in the description. My Twitter handle is down there, hweather420. But I definitely appreciate everybody watching my video today. Remember to like the video down below, give it a thumbs thumbs up. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. A great rest of your week, and I will see you all in the next video.